Hello, I'm Connor Kennedy, and I'll be presenting to you the Yusuko Open 2023 Silver Problem 2 Field Day. In this problem, we have some teams, and these teams are composed of either Guernseys or Holstein Cows. And we want to find for each team what's the other team that has the greatest difference in the team members. So, for instance, if we look at this first team here, uh, we see that it says Guernsey, Holstein, Guernsey, Guernsey, Holstein, or GHGGH. And the furthest away team from this one is the last team, which is HGHHG, because at every position, uh, the cow type is different. Meanwhile, for this one, uh, for the second team, the furthest one away from the second team is going to be this last team here because we have a difference in this position, in this position, and this position, which is 3, and compared to this one, it only has 2. So one of the first things I saw when I read this problem was the special bound that C is less than or equal to 18. So that means that the number of cows on each team is less than or equal to 18. And numbers like 18, 20, etc. are really small, and usually this means that there's some kind of thing to do with exponential, like 2 to the 18 is around uh, 300,000. So usually you can do something with that. And also we can consider the fact that uh, these teams are only made of two types of cows, Guernseys and Holsteins. This suggests that maybe we could represent these in binary. So for instance, if we assign g equals 1 and h equals 0, then we can rewrite these teams. We can rewrite these teams as uh, binary numbers with the uh, team positions. So for instance, this first team here, GHGGH, would turn into 10110. The second team, GHHHH, would turn into 10000. This just makes working with the teams a little bit easier, since we won't have to worry about like storing an array for each team or anything like that. We can just represent them as simple integers. So now let's figure out how we can solve this problem. The naive solution, where we just look at every team and for every team, look at all the other teams to see kind of uh, which team is the first distance, that's going to be too slow because that will take at least n squared time. And since n squared is 10 to the 5, we have 10 to the 5 squared is too slow. So there are two different paths we can take to try and speed this up. One way we can speed this up is still go through all the queries one by one, uh, or all the teams one by one, and just try and figure out which team is the uh, maximum difference uh, faster. Or another way we can try speeding it up is try and do a bunch of teams at once, and that way we don't have to really worry about making it faster each individual one. We can just have the, uh, the time spread out over all of the teams. For this problem, I'm going to go with the second strategy, where we do all the teams at once, because there's not really an obvious way to speed it up for an individual team. You'd have to look through a lot of the teams, and if you want to speed it up to something like log n, you'll need to find a good way to do that. And there, I couldn't really find any good ways to do that, but there's a pretty nice solution if we try and do all the teams at once. There are two kind of key observations on the path to solving this problem at least the way I did it. And the first key observation is, I claim that this problem is actually a graph problem in disguise. To see why, let's try and reword the problem a little bit. The problem wants us to try and find the maximum difference between any two teams, but what if this were instead a maximum distance? That might be something we could feasibly use a graph to do. Let's try and think about what a distance between two of these teams would entail. So say we have two of our teams, like this one being 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. Remember that we're still using our binary thing. And this one being 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. Say we have these two teams. Since we want their maximum difference to be 5, we want the distance to be 5. So there needs to be four nodes somewhere in the middle here that connect each other. So what would we want these intermediate nodes to be? Well, one thing we can do is we can represent these intermediate nodes, or the edges between the nodes as flipping one bit. So for instance, this edge could be flipping the first bit, so it would be 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 after that. This one could be flipping the second bit, so it could be 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. 
This one could be flipping the third bit. So this would be uh, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Uh, this one would be 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. And finally, this one would be flipping the last bit. So it would be 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. And in general, I would define there to be an edge between any two vertices if there's a single bit flip between them. So like if you have 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, then I would define there to be an edge between these two vertices because there's a single bit that's been flipped between them. As it turns out, this kind of graph is exactly what our problem needs. Because if we want to turn one team into another team, or to figure out the difference between any two teams, we could flip what bits one at a time until we get the other team. So for instance, if we want to turn the first, uh, the first team into the second team, for instance, then we could find the minimum or the maximum distance uh, by just flipping bits one at a time. So this one would turn into uh, 10010 zero, 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 if we flip the third bit, and then that would go into 10000. Zero, 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 zero. So you can see that the distance between these two is 2. And this will be represented in our graph as these are vertices that are connected by an edge. So to find the, dif the difference between any two of these nodes, we can just find the minimum distance between them. So now that we have this graph, uh, we can kind of use it to help solve our problem. The thing is, our problem is that we want to find the maximum distance uh, to any node, or the maximum shortest distance to any of the other teams. And that's not really an easy problem to solve with graphs. And this is where our second observation comes in. I claim that uh, if we want to find the maximum shortest distance to any of the other teams, we must find the minimum shortest distance to any of their inverses. So what do I mean by inverse? Well, if we take any team and represent it as in a binary, so for instance, uh, 10110 means the team GHGGH, then we can take its inverse by uh, just flipping every bit. So 01001 zero, 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 one would be the inverse of 10110. Zero, also, note that if we have any team, if you have any team here, and this has a distance x, say, from uh, this first team, then it's going to have a distance of c minus x from the inverse. Why? Because this distance x is really just uh, that we have to flip x bits to get to this team. However, if we want to get to the inverse, we have to flip the other, all the other bits except for those x. So say, for instance, if this is 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, then this x would be 2, since we have to flip these two bits. But if we want to get to this one, we have to flip all of the other bits. So we need to flip these three. So the distance there would be 5 minus 2 is 3. And this helps us greatly, because instead of having to find like the maximum different distance from any team to uh, all the other teams, we can instead just find the shortest distance to any of the inverse teams. And if we just take c minus the distance, that distance, we get the longest distance here. So if this is x, then we can get this is c minus x. And if we find the shortest inverse, then we know we found the longest uh, normal team, because uh, if, we, if there is a longer team, then they have a shorter inverse, so that's impossible. And finding the shortest distance to any of the team is pretty simple to do in a graph. Uh, we can just simply do a breadth for search and find out which of these inverses is closest. So now we can figure out what's the furthest distance from any team uh, by just looking at the inverses. But this only helps us with one team at a time. How do we do multiple at once? Well, to do multiple at once, uh, instead of starting the search, with a single team, we start the search with the inverses. We set the distance of all the inverses to be zero, and then we can do a breadth through search from uh, any of the from all the inverses at the same time. And if we have this breadth through search cover the entire graph, then that means that once we're done, we can just simply find the distance that uh, that each team was from any of the inverses, and we can do that pretty quickly. And note that this graph, uh, since it represents every possible binary number of size c, 
uh, this graph has size 2 to C, which is at most 2 to the 18, which is 300, around 300,000. And so if we do a breadth first search, this will be fast enough. So yeah, there's our solution. The general idea is first we start by converting all of the teens from their G's and H forms into their binary form. Then we want to kind of create this graph. And when we create the graph, we want to do a breadth first search on it. And we do this breadth first search by setting all the distances to the inverses to be zero and then just filling up the entire grid so that we're able to find the distance from any node, which is a team. Uh, we can find the distance from any node to one of the inverses. And then once we find that distance, then we can just find our answer by subtracting C from it. So let's look at the code for this solution. So here's my C++ code for this solution. So we first start off by reading in, oops, we start off by reading in all of the uh, input, and we have these three arrays. This teams array stores the integer version of each team. This disks array uh, is for when we do our breadth first search. It stores the distance from any node, any possible team, to one of the inverses, the minimum distance. And we initialize it to 1,000 as kind of our uh, dummy value. And then we have this queue here, uh, which is for also for our breadth first search. So we read our input here. Uh, we have a string s, which is what we read in our g's and h's too. And then we calculate the binary value of the team. Uh, we do this by just starting with uh, the initial value. And then every time we read in a new character, we double the value and then add on whether or not it's a g. So this is a strategy to convert uh, one of these strings into a binary. Uh, basically, we're creating the binary number digit by digit. And then uh, whenever we add a new digit, we multiply the whole thing by 2 to get, get an extra 0 at the end. And then we add on the value, whether it's a 1 or a 0. And x stores the binary value of the team. rx stores the inverse of that value. And that's why we compare it with h instead of a g. So after we write in those binary values, we set teams i to be equal to the binary value of the team. And then we set the distance of its inverse to be zero because we'll need to be searching through that. And then we add that to the priority queue because that's one of our starting nodes for the breadth first search. And here's where we do our actual breadth first search. So while the priority queue is not empty, uh, we pop off the front of the priority queue and that gets us our current node that we look at. And now we need to look through all the adjacent nodes. Um, this isn't really something I talk about. But essentially, all of the adjacent nodes in this graph are just all of the different bit flips we can do. So we loop from V all the way up to C, and we loop through all the possible bits that can be flipped. Uh, we flip that bit by using XOR. So we XOR the current number uh, with the uh, single bit that needs to be flipped, and I'll flip the bit in the number. So for instance, if you have like 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, and B was equal to 2, that would flip the uh, third least significant bit, so it would turn into 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. And finally, if we haven't reached this node yet, if the distance is still 1,000, uh, we just push that into the priority queue, uh, just standard breadth research stuff, and then we set its distance to the current distance plus 1. And then once we've done that, uh, the distances array will be filled with all the minimum distances to any of the team inverses. So all we have to do from there is print out the answers, and we get the answer by subtracting C from the distances to the current team. So yeah, uh, that's our solution. Thank you for watching.